Hello and welcome to another Back to Jerusalem podcast. I'm Eugene Bach, your host for this time, and I'm coming to you live on delay from somewhere within the borders of the Middle East this time where we're actually seeing so much challenges with Israel now declaring war, which is why I've asked my next guest to come on, a good friend of mine, somebody that is not a stranger to Back to Jerusalem, and someone that you probably, if you've been listening to this show at all for any length amount of time, you'll you'll know his name, Rabbi Miles Weiss. Rabbi Miles Weiss, thank you so much for joining us, brother. It's great to have you on, especially during this time. It's always good to be with you, Eugene. I'm, uh, as you know, I'm in between uh, tears, rage, and confidence in God's promises in His Word. And so it's been a, obviously a time of tumult. I want to give a disclaimer: I am not in Israel. I'm on the left coast of the United States of America at the other Golden Gate. Uh, the Golden Gate of Messiah's Gate, of course, is Jerusalem, and then we are at the other Golden Gate here in San Francisco Bay Area. And I, my disclaimer is that I'm not in the land, and so you need to temper what I say with uh, what I feel is the, the actual challenge, which is our friends, family, brothers, and sisters that are in Israel at this time. Uh, it's a totally grievous moment. Um, uh, I just want to read a couple of quotes for you, and I'm going to ask you where you think they came from. The Zionist movement should stop because it could lead to war. But who can challenge the rights of the Jews in Palestine? Good Lord, historically, it is really your country. Who do you think said that? I'll tell you. Yusuf Dia Al-Khalidi, the Arab mayor of Jerusalem in 1899. Oh, wow. I'll give you another one. Wow. It is indeed not... It is indeed not the birth of a nation for the Jewish nation through centuries of oppression and captivity have preserved their sentiment of nationality as few peoples could. It is the rebirth of a nation. That's Lord Robert Cecil, British lawyer, member of parliament and diplomat in 1918. And finally, I'll give you two more. We Arabs, especially the educated among us, hello, hello is my addition, We Arabs, especially the educated among us, look with deepest sympathy on the Zionist movement. We all wish the Jews a hearty welcome home. Our two movements complement one another. That's Amir Faisal, a leader of the Arab world in 1919. And finally, it is manifestly right that the scattered Jews should have a national center and a national home and be reunited. And where else but in Palestine, which for 3,000 years they have been intimately and profoundly associated with. And that's Winston Churchill in 1921. So, because we are currently being led by morons like AOC and Al Qaeda, I call them the squad, and it's totally have influence, this Marxist leftist influence over this country, we are making mistake after mistake after mistake and not discerning the signs of the times and understanding that Isaiah in 520 said the day would come when we would, we would say woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And so I am, as you can see, I'm pretty stirred up about what is happening in Israel right now. I'm not going to go over the gory details. They're all over the Internet. I highly recommend you look at Ben Shapiro's latest post. Uh, if you can sign up for Daily Wire and see the actual video. He is showing the videos in a cohesive manner and commenting in his brilliant way about what you're seeing. And it's pretty horrifying. And I'm sending it to people because I'm challenging them to actually look at it. He calls it the face of absolute evil. We need to remember this is not primarily a political issue. It is a spiritual issue, goes back to the garden, goes back to heaven before the garden. It has to do with the fall of Satan from heaven and the third of the angels that he took with him and the fact that there is demonic, there are demonic forces in this world that are inhabiting people and driving movements. And the fact is that Israel celebrates life and love and work and productivity and we take a piece of desert a land that could not be farmed, put, God puts a people that didn't know how to farm there, and they've created a paradise. What does that elicit? It elicits incredible rage and incredible jealousy, incredible antipathy, that it goes back to the beginning of time. As Netanyahu has said, this is the oldest hatred in the world is the hatred of Jews. And Martin Luther King Jr. was wise enough to say that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. So... I'm now gathering materials to give out to all the places that I speak. Uh, Stand With Us has a great Israel 101 booklet for a few bucks. And uh, 
uh, the Hamas charter. You can download that. You can see that and see exactly what's going on with this. And uh, I, I, beyond my ability to actually process what is happening, I'm trying to stick to biblical prophecy, the fact that I believe we're between Psalm 83, which is when the surrounding Arab nations say, let us make Israel a memory that it will stand no more. I'm balancing that with the fact that God has said in Amos 9.15, I will plant you in the land, never to be uprooted again. He did that in 1948 officially, going on for 100 years or so. We're back, we're in the land, and God is going to have his way. But I believe we're on the precipice of Ezekiel 38 and 39, because the nations are aligning, Russia, Iran, and China are aligning in such a way as predicted. And the main player that I learned years ago from an ex-PLO terrorist who I traveled with, they, people love hearing from a born-again Jew and an ex-PLO terrorist together. And we traveled together, and he said to me, Mr. Miles, the only occupation in the Arab world is the occupation of young Arab minds, because the inculcation of the children in Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, and in Gaza, and in, in Lebanon, the inculcation is about hatred, jihad, and becoming a shaheed, a martyr. Now, you know this, Eugene, because you deal with it in all the closed countries of the world that are predominantly Muslim. But what we're seeing now is the emboldening that has come from having an incredibly weak American leadership that funds Iran, that has made a statement that they immediately took down from the new, brand new uh, uh, consulate for Palestinian issues, I think Biden calls it. Whenever I say Biden, you know I mean whoever's running the show, because we don't know what Biden knows and doesn't know. It's pretty clear that he's a puppet. But what we're seeing is America going after praying Catholics, uh, pro-life Christians, uh, anybody that stands with Donald Trump, anybody that opposes lies from the media, anybody that opposes the government's lies, going after them while allowing and funding terror, especially $6 billion to Iran, a promise of that, which allowed them to feel freer. When there's a space between America and Israel, which there is right now, then we the blessing lifts off of us, and we see this happening because we have been standing with Israel primarily for the, since our inception, and now we're in the most precipitous place possible. This is Obama 3.0. He hates Israel, hates the Jews, and now we're seeing that play out in this, this gaggle of incredibly corrupt or inept or, you know, that's the game my friends and I play. It's stupid or liar. You know, that's one game. The other game is evil or stupid. You know, like, who's complicit? Who's just going along with the program? And who is actually fomenting this? You know, we're just... Uh, you gotta stop me, brother, because I'll just keep ranting. I can't. Yeah, no, I, 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 I mean, this is why we. I really, I mean, I learned so much from you, especially with what is taking place. Um, you spend so much of your time split between the U.S. and Israel. Um, you have spent quite a bit of time taking groups around and introducing them to the Judaic history uh, and, and heritage of every Christian, and uh, and so this is so important. You mentioned Iran. Um, of all the countries that we work in, in the 1040 window, uh, from China to North Korea to Iran to Saudi Arabia to Yemen to Somalia to Sudan, the one connecting factor, the thread that, that brings them all together is their hatred of Israel. And, uh, and, and you, I think that you pointed out correctly that this is spiritual, that this is not political but we see things forming i have a book coming out about iran tomorrow uh you talked about the six billion dollars that was basically handed over from south korea to iran which freed up other uh funds that they have within the country we've already seen that from before whenever money goes to iran that money is then shifted to their proxies um we saw the sanctions lifted and I don't know if you saw this or not, but the sanctions were lifted and now you have about 2.2 million barrels of oil being sold from Iran now. Um, uh, and out of that 2.2 million, 1.5 million barrels per day are being bought from Iran by China. And so China yeah. is helping sponsor 
these proxies. Um, I just read a report yesterday that there are 19 proxy units, um, different units. So not just Hamas, but all these different sanctions and groups um, that are in Israel and around Israel sponsored by Iran. And their funding just exploded within the last year. Uh, they're yeah. training the the uh, the financial support and the weapons transfers. So a lot of the weapons, the anti-air tank uh, personnel, uh, missile systems, um, a, a lot of that is being shipped over from Iran. There is a there is a deep deep hatred, and as you pointed out, it is spiritual. So I think that this is really important for 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 us to know. Um, what is, uh, what, w with the reaction that you're seeing, um, how much of Israel's reaction do you see as being spiritual? Do you, have, have you seen any of your contacts, you know, praying, whether they be Jew or Christian, um, and, and really calling out, or are you seeing more of a physical reaction, um, to the, to the evil that was perpetrated upon Israel in, over the weekend? Well, it's both and, you yeah, know, okay. obviously the, the, uh, you know, everybody that I speak to is in shock and we're praying for their children who are in the IDF. 300,000 troops have been called up and, uh, that means people are flying in from all over the world, from America, from nice, uh, so far safe places. They're flying into Israel to stand and to, to be mobilized. And, uh, sorry. I think the prayers are praying <laughs> and uh, the soldiers are going to soldier, you know, and it is a mixed bag. Of course, we, we pray for the, and we support and we send funds to the Messianic believers that are in the army and the IDF in general. But, uh, you know, there's a time for everything under heaven. There's a time for peace, a time for war. There's a time, I would say, paraphrasing, there's a time to pray and there's a time to act. And the fact is that right now, uh, many of us are hoping that Israel does not bend to the opinions of the United Nations, which we call United Nothing, the UN. United Nothing, which is united against Israel, seems to be their main purpose for living. And uh, we, we are praying that there would be a decisive uh, elimination of the leadership of Hamas, we pray, of course, for the least amount of collateral damage as possible, but, you know, stuff happens when you get this kind of slaughter. Um, and so I think that there's going to be a lot more death in the, in the short term. Here. But I, I hope, let me give you a little background for me personally. I was in, remember Gary Bauer, he ran for president for a minute. I was in his office in Washington, D.C. with Rosemary Schindler and my wife. In 2005, we were with a delegation. It was one of my Forrest Gump moments. It's kind of, you look around like, how did I get here? Because there was all these mucky mucks, these high level leadership from Jew, Jew, the Jewish world and the Christian world. And they were, they were commiserating on how to get a message to Ariel Sharon and to Bush to not abandon Gaza. That if you abandon Gaza, it will become a terror platform. And so, you know, with all this was going on, I had an E.F. Hutton moment. That's an archaic reference for those under 60, but where, where I suggested that we give them each uh, a book by Tom Hess, a Christian evangelist on the east side of, of Jerusalem, and uh, Benny Alon, who at the time was the Ministry of Tur Minister of Tourism, an Orthodox Jewish rabbi. And I said, give them each, give them uh, a copy of each of these books. One is from a Christian perspective and one is from a Jewish perspective about the sons of Abraham and the, the land that was promised and the promises to Abraham and how to give up land, quote unquote, for peace is going to be land for pieces because this is not about land. And I have this map that I, I the title of it is, uh, uh, what is it called? It's, it's uh, uh, Understanding the Jewish Occupation of the Muslim World and you see this teeny, tiny, tiny little blue dot in the middle, which is Israel, and the surrounding millions of miles of acreage of all the Muslim countries around us. Like, oh, and the unjust occupation of Muslim land. And it's, it's kind of hilarious. It wasn't so tragic. There's never been anything about this. 
about land for peace. It's never been a two-state solution. It's never been about living side by side. It's always been about the Hamas Charter, which comes out of the Quran, which is if they're orthodox, Islam is about destruction of the Jewish people, the apes and pigs, that's you and me, and the overtaking of the world for the glory of Allah, for the domination of the world by Islam. Uh, years ago, a seminarian who became a missionary in the Middle East, who's a, a non-charismatic guy who came back understanding the power of miracles and needing them, a <laughs> uh, brilliant guy, William Wagner, wrote a book called How Islam Plans to Change the World. And it changed my life. I must have read it 25 years ago. And speaks about the progression from Dawah, cultural infiltration, which we're seeing in Michigan, we're seeing in the U.S. Congress, we're seeing in the, the halls of all the universities that's, that's bowing down to Islam. Uh, that is academic or legislative, and then goes from Dawa till the power is strong enough and the population is big enough, and then it goes to jihad, right? And you've seen it firsthand because you work in the closed countries. So I, I feel like uh, I'm hoping for a decisive end for Hamas. I would like to see, <laughs> this is a little radical, I'd like to see Israel take, um, take Gaza back. And if I had my fantasy wishes, just bring 10,000 buses in there and take everybody, just like they ripped the Jews out. 2005, they ripped out 10,000 Jews and gave it to Hamas. Uh, just take 10,000 buses there and, and ferry people to, to Lebanon and to, to, uh, to Jordan and to Egypt, and you know, God bless you, have a nice life. And we'll go back to what we hope would happen when, when, the, when the Jews abandoned Gaza. The prayer, the hope, the dream, especially of left-leaning uh, Israelis and Jews around the world was that, okay, this is great. They're going to build a paradise. They've got shoreline property. It's going to be the Hilton and the Hyatt and the Marriott and casinos or who knows what all is allowed. But, you know, they're going to have like this incredible place to build a prosperous and productive and just forward going nation state right alongside Israel. Isn't this great? And what do they do? They immediately stripped out the cemeteries, desecrated them, made the headstones into pissoirs and latrines, and immediately got to, they ripped out all the greenhouses that the Jews had built for 35 years that was exporting fruits and flowers to Europe, and they ripped it all down, made every, took every piece of tubing, made it into a rocket launcher, they took everything that was sacred to the Jews, any synagogue, any, anything related to Jewish history, and made them into latrines, and began arming and arming and arming, and therefore, this morning when I was praying, I had this horrifying image of uh, there's that great scene in, in, in uh, Braveheart when they, they're hiding in the grass with the sharpened spears. And he says, wait, wait, wait. And as the onslaught is coming, wait, wait, wait now. And then they lift up these sharpened uh, tree trunks and stop the army. And I had this horrifying picture like that picture, which is a wonder when you see it in the movies. But what if this last 10 years of, of Hamas being in charge of Gaza, what if that has been, I mean, we know they've been building tunnels and infiltrating and coming over and shooting rockets. What if they have been preparing a snare that even Israeli intelligence is not aware of? Because this was an intelligence failure, possibly a military failure. I mean, it's shocking that they were able to pull this off. And it was brilliant, you know, 2,000 rockets coming over while they were actually while the Iron Dome was busy focusing on that, they actually were able to breach the borders by land, sea, and air. So in that way, it was evil, brilliant. But I just hope that, uh, <laughs> I hope Israel knows what it's doing. I would assume they do. But uh, as I say, we're in shock that they could have pulled this off. Well, one of the and things then, you know, that you pointed the, the, out... Even, even, if it's not, even if it's not a military snare... The public relations snare is really what Hamas and these terrorist organizations are about, because they can just, they'll draw you in, and they will have collateral damage, which will be, because they, they hide their weapons caches, of course, in hospitals and schools and mosques. So the Israelis, and you, you probably know this, Eugene, I don't know if your audience does, but the Israeli army has a policy called knocking on the roof. And what they do is they send phone calls, leaflets, and, and radio, radio interceptions to the neighborhood where they have a building that's full of arms. And they warn the Palestinian, the Arab civilians, they warn them to get out. And then they put a special kind of a weapon, I don't know how it works, but a special small, small rocket. They shoot it to the top of the roof, the corner of the roof, and they call it knocking on the door. And that's a signal. This building is coming down. Get out, run for your lives. 
Well, Hamas will not allow them to get out because Hamas wants the, the, these morons around the world, especially the mediaites, one of the most dreaded tribes in all the earth, the mediaites, to take a hold of those pictures of, of Palestinian Arab dead people and be able to say, look at what Israel does, look at who Israel is. This is after Israel, the only army in the world that warns civilians, that pre- tries to protect civilians, that tries to go to extreme lengths at their own peril to not have civilian death. Yeah, They'll promote well, that around the world. Well, and it just, it'll just foment the same thing that's going on. I mean, we've seen this weekend, we've seen protests in support, support for Hamas in all the major cities of Europe and, of course, in the United States as well, in freaking Times Square. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it, one of the things that you're pointing out, though, and it's, it's something that I've spent time, I did a podcast a couple months ago uh, with a guy, it got very heated, deba- it, got, it turned into a very heated debate. Um, a, a, a guy who had, uh, uh, was, a, was a Buddhist and uh, wanted to debate Buddhism, but it turned out that he really wanted to debate one of the things that I had said very clearly, and uh, he didn't, he, he felt that it was off, and, and uh, it turned into a shouting match even at one time on one of the podcasts. But Islam creates poverty. The, the more orthodox you go with Islam, the more poor and the misery index of the people goes skyrocketing. Um, mm. When you see nations that do well with Islam, it's because right now I'm in Dubai. Um, I'm calling you from Dubai. People come to Dubai and they're like, wow, this is what can happen you know, in a Muslim country. No, this is what happens <laughs> when Christians come and occupy an area and they relax the Muslim law so that the Christians can operate a business environment. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. The more relaxed Islamic law becomes, the more profitable right. the society benefits. You just talked about Gaza. A lot of people may not even know where Gaza Strip is, but you said something that was very key. And I just want to talk about that for the audience just for a second, is that that's all beachfront property. It's all oh. right there on the on the coast. Gorgeous yep. Mediterranean type of sea where you can build hotels and, 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 and have, to- you can have Thailand island environments right there um, anybody that's been to Tel Aviv, you can see what would happen, you know, in the, a, a beach-like resort environment. Gaza is set up for that. Um, but yep. because of Islam, that is all just the equal distribution of poverty. And um, uh, and my, uh, I don't know if I told you this before or not, but my, my wife's cousin um, lives in Israel in one of the areas where... Um, that has been determined as the uh, as occupied territory, and uh, her mm-hmm. daughter um, just joined the IDF the beginning of this year. She she turned of age, mm. uh, graduated high mm. school, and then and now is a is in the IDF, and so mm. she's on the front lines now. You know, in this in this battle, and so it's been a big thing with my wife's family as they watch the news unfold and um we've kind of gotten a front row seat a little bit you know because we're working in iran like i said we have a book coming out on iran tomorrow i'm sure you've seen this but it was i it this is not being covered really in the news at all and i'm not i mean well i know why so i don't want to pretend like i don't know why but senators rick scott ted cruz and roger wicker um, have been, they just uncovered, this is massive and it's nowhere in the news, that the Biden administration actually had a an Iranian spy that was on their Iran policy team that did the negotiations for the $6 billion. Um, and, and this person was directly involved in the intelligence of Iran, basically had infiltrated into the US government. This is massive news. And it's not, I mean, right. you have three senators that are now holding hearings um, because of this woman that was that has now been seen as a spy. She's an operative, an Iran operative on the Biden team. Um, and so we have a front row seat with that. China just came out today 
um, today, Monday, um, the 9th of October. So just uh, only hours after the attack from, from Hamas, China just came out today and said, yeah, of course there was an attack because Gaza needs to be given over to the Palestinians. Um, and and com uh, they, they came out in complete support of Palestine. So we're, we're there wait, wait, with... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Yeah. In 2005... 10 years ago, almost, Gaza was given to the Palestinians. The Arabs took it over. The Jews were forcibly removed. Let's not unwind history. It was, the Jews were forcibly removed by their own government. Ariel Sharon, by the way, then went into a coma for eight years and died. That's between him and God. But the, the, the Arabs have had that place since 2005. They elected Hamas. In 2006, uh, Hamas is the elected government of Gaza. Yes. It is not that something the Jews need to give over. It's yep. something that the Jews gave almost 10 years ago and have, have been facing constant infiltration, tunnel building, terror attacks, and rocket barrages from Gaza for 10 years. So I don't even know what they're talking about. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, me because I completely agree with smart. you. So a little amazing to me that they would even actually try to voice something like that on the world. But hey, I'm not surprised about anything. The whole world lies in witness. I'm not surprised by any of the levels of corruption to the highest level. And this lady that was just exposed by these three senators, a little late to the party. Yeah. This stuff has been going on in academia Agreed. and in government and in politics for a generation. Yeah. You know, so this is not breaking news. This is like, hello. And by the way, of the 7 million or so that just came in through our border, many of whom, most of whom are fighting age men. How many of those are international terrorists? We know nothing. Yeah. We know nothing about it, what's going on know, in the USA um, regarding is, our giving over I, this country. I, I, I still believe that because of our history, it's like, it's like Paul said that, that the Jews are beloved because of the forefathers, right? We are enemies of the gospel because we don't understand Jesus. He said, but we will, because all Israel shall be saved. And by the way, you folks listening to this are to provoke us to jealousy by your love and good works. Instead of trying to convert us to Christianity, how about starting by standing with us and loving us and understanding us? And, and God will bring the increase. God is going to save all of Israel. But it's up to the Christian church to be a witness and to be a partner, to comfort, comfort my people, saith the Lord. That said, uh, this, this phenomenon of infiltration and undermining of this country, which has been blessed because of our Judeo-Christian foundation, has been blessed because Harry Truman got the ball rolling 11 minutes into the, the announcing of the state of Israel. He signed on as the first country to say, yes, this is true. This is Isaiah 66, verse 8. Can a nation be born in a day? Yes. May 14th, 1948, it was born in a day. God gave us Dead Sea Scrolls that same year as a birthday gift. To, to Israel to say, guess what? The word is true. I'm fulfilling the word. The word that, that the Christians have in their hand is the same as what I had 800 years before in these scrolls from Isaiah. Same Bible. Uh, so God I, gives this birthday present, a blank can, check basically saying, I'm doing this. Biblical prophecy is real. I say it. I do it. Are you going to believe it? I know that your time is short, uh, but let me ask you a question on something that you brought up because this this is something that I think can that that so many people are confused by. You pointed this out so clearly, which I think is great. This is uh, Mao Ning today, which is she is the uh, foreign ministry spokesperson of China. She said that in order to end the cycle of conflict between Palestine and Israel, it's essential to implement a two-state solution in Gaza. Why, why, why do people keep saying that? Why do they try to point out or try to say that, that Gaza doesn't have independence? Where, where does that come from? It's a kleptocracy, the Hamas leadership gets billions of dollars from nations around the world, including the United States. And the leadership takes it. They live very well in Gaza, and they live very well in the quote-unquote West Bank. I never use that term, because it is Judea and Samaria. It's where Jesus walked, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob walked. It is the center of the country, the heart of Israel, the heartland, it's called. And so the, the, the bosses 
it's like a mafia. The bosses live very well. The people are impoverished. They, you know, they have no production of their own, so Israel has to give them free water and free electricity. And occasionally, when the rocket barrages come, Israel will, will, will tighten that down, which makes Israel the evil actor, because they'll tighten down water and electricity for a few days in order to say, hey, don't do that. Don't, don't shoot the rockets. Cycle of violence is one of the most BS phrases that we hear all the time from anti-Semites and all the time from anti-Israelites. It is a, it's totally not true. This is not a cycle of violence where Israel is a willing participant in, in hurting Palestinian people. 20% of the population in Israel is Arab. They vote. They have full citizenship. They are serving in the, in the Supreme Court. They're serving on the, in the Knesset, the parliament. I mean, it is absolute BS. I remember back when we were doing television for that season that one of our drivers one time was a, a, a Bedouin, precious sweet guy, very religious. Every, we have to stop the thing five times a day from the break. Okay, not a problem. He told me privately, he said, where your people rule, there is order. Where my people rule, there is chaos, period. I think that the idea that there's a cycle of violence is part of the UN international pro-communist, pro-Marxist, anti-God, anti-Bible, anti judeo christian values movement that is trying to make an equivalency between Israel's defense. The reason why Israel, the IDF is the Israel defense forces. We don't want to kill anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody. We're kind of a live and let live group, you know, having suffered for 2000 years by the Christians and 4,000 years by every other nation. We're kind of like, hey, can't we all get along? We're kind of the Rodney King of nations. Like, can't we all get along? Like, I, I think that it's, it's really disingenuous, and I would say beyond that, it's evil to hear people in our Congress tell us about a cycle of violence when the attacks are always coming from one side. Can there be a two-state solution? I don't know. I don't get it. I don't see it in the Bible. I see that the land was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is Israel. I see that uh, that's the promise, and that's what God said. And we are, because of our fear... Jewish fear of marginalization and of alienation and of being, again, holocausted, genocided, as my comedian friend Maria Bamford would say, genocided. I like that. You know, because of our concern with that and this world opinion, we concede and we concede and we concede and we, we backpedal and backpedal and backpedal. And the fact is, it's a, it's a land that's holy to three, promised to one. Christians, Muslims, both revere Israel. It's promised to the sons of Abraham. And that's the thing. It's a question of sovereignty. That's why we're coming back to the very beginning. This is not an issue of politics. It's spiritual. It's an attack on the word of God, the prophetic word of God, and his sovereignty over the affairs of men. His sovereignty. The fact that he is king of kings, lord of lords, he is returning. Yeshua, Jesus, came as a, as a, a lamb to the slaughter. He came humbly riding on a donkey, Zechariah 9 9 prophesied it. You see it in the Gospels. Riding on a donkey, lowly, humble, and went to his death for you and for me. He bled real blood for you and for me so we could have salvation and, and meet with him forever. But he's returning as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's returning on Air Horse One at some point. <laughs> and, and we're going to see the king take over. He will rule the nations with a rod of iron. But in the meantime, we're, we're giddy up in our way to Ezekiel 38 and 39. We're, we're heading, we're between Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38 and 39. And my friend, my Palestinian friend that I told you about, my PLO terrorist friend, born again Christian now, he said 10 years ago or more, maybe 15 years ago, he said, watch Turkey. He used to joke from the pulpit, gobble, 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 watch Turkey. Because Turkey is in this, incognito place of being allegedly part of NATO, but absolutely anti everything West. So it's, it's a mixed bag there, but I think that we're going to see them being a, a moral player in the days ahead. Whew. Wow, brother. Yeah, no, I know <laughs> we've, seen that. we've seen that uh, specifically uh, with uh, Finland and Sweden trying to join NATO being blocked by Turkey because of Turkey wants to execute some individuals that they consider to be their enemy and uh, Sweden wasn't allowing it. 
Um, I know that your time is short um, and I can, I know that you're very passionate about this as we all are. Uh, when, when we pray for Israel, as we close out, can you tell us like, how should we direct our prayers? What is a good thing to, to remember and keep in mind while praying for the nation of Israel today as they're, as, as they're embarking on the first days of war? So I, you know, it's, some of it's very obvious, you know, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you will prosper. Uh, that means inquire into the well-being, of, which is why I'm so grateful that you bring me on, because I'm in touch with and constantly inquiring into well-being of the, of the people there. Uh, there's that. But let me try this one. I've never done this before. But if, if people want to go to Miles underscore Catherine uh, Instagram uh, we posted our card, our prayer card that we give out at all of our meetings, wherever we speak in the world. And it is literally, it's got all the needs on it, you know, a little postcard. And it's got the front and the back. They can see it at Miles and Captain uh, Instagram. Uh, that would be the easiest way to do it. But I can tell you, we need to pray for a return to the word. We need to pray for a revelation. We need wisdom for the leadership. We need wisdom for the military. And we need the, a, a, a response that is commensurate with this level of terror. You know, it's very, it's, this is the worst. This is a 9-11. This is the time that is so devastating. If you, if they dare, if your people want to see what Ben Shapiro has posted, he's posting all the videos that were posted by Hamas. So you're seeing the celebration over the rape, torture, kidnapping, and mutilation of Jews. Disgusting. If you can handle it, I Disgusting. highly recommend you pay the 10 bucks a month or whatever it is for Daily Wire. But I, I just, uh, words fail. I'm going to be doing a lot of podcasts this week. Uh, thank you for doing this with me. I'm going to post thank, it on ours as well when I yeah, get it from thank, you. Thank you, brother. Uh, this is some, I mean, you, you came to mind right away. I reached out as soon as I saw the invasion uh, into Israel. We wanted to bring you on just so that you could share with us so that we could know and keep abreast of the situation. So I'm so Thankful, thankful, thankful for your fellowship. And uh, we will be praying for the nation of Israel, praying for you guys. Um, I guess please go on. If you're listening to this podcast, please go on to Miles and Catherine's Instagram page. That's Miles underscore Catherine. You'll find them on Instagram. Or you can go to their website as well. He didn't mention it, but that's mkhop.org. mkhop.org. Miles and Catherine. Uh, houseofprayer.org. You'll see that uh, if you do a Google search or type that in uh, or follow them on Instagram. Uh, thank you so much, brother, for, for joining us. And uh, thanks for sharing that insight. I really, really appreciate yes. it. God bless you, bro. It's always a great time with you. And I just want to encourage everyone. God is on the throne. Amen. Keep looking up. Your redemption draws near. Amen. Thanks, brother. Amen. God bless you. Yep. And thank you for joining you us for another Back to Jerusalem Ooh. podcast. Again, I'm Eugene Bach, your host for this time, coming to you live on delay from somewhere within the borders of the Middle East. God bless you.